Okay, hello everyone. How are you? It's K. Okay, so thank you for joining everyone today. And I'm sorry I'm late because I was at the meeting today. So, but I just finished it and came here. So, yeah, great to see you again, everyone. I hope you're having a great, great weekend today. So, yeah, let's start the live stream right now. So today markets are closed, so I will talk about some psychology or um, some other topics besides technical analysis. And especially today, I will be talking about how to study trading because I think um, the, um, the way we, tr we study trades uh, would be different from what we learn in other areas. So, I will talk about this topic based on the vote that I took this week. So, hopefully you enjoy the live stream until the end today. Okay, so, let me see who's here first. Let me switch screen. And uh, let's see who's here. Alright, TSM, thank you for joining. Good to see you today. Alright. Uh, um... Enyam, good to see you. And Annie, thank you for joining too. All right. And Gabby, good to see you. Thank you for joining as well. All right, Kevin and Slimon, thank you for joining. Okay, um, Miffy and Oscar. Mark, thank you for joining as well. Great to see you. All right, I see many people here too. And Win Camillus, good to see you too. All right, Vasilis and Tony Gold. Oman. All right, coin flip. Good to see you too. Thank you for joining. James and Luke, uh, Tilip, Asif, and Rain, Sorosh, and everyone. Good to see you here, as always. So before starting here, as a quick disclaimer, as usual, uh, this contents on my YouTube channel is basically all based on my own experience and knowledge. So when you take trades, please do with your own risk management. And also, if you can please follow the rules and guidelines in the chat, that would be great. Also, please be careful on the um, spams in social media. People are creating the fake, uh, fake accounts of mine and uh, spamming others. I have been getting some reports by email, and that's why I announce it to everyone. So please be careful for these scammers out there. All right, so uh, yeah, um, I hope you have been enjoying the video series on the theme in August 2022, which is overview of KTS, case trading strategy. Um, so there will be one last video, which will be uploaded next Tuesday. And in the month of September, I will be doing the video series on other topic in September. So, hopefully you continue to enjoy this uh, series in my YouTube channel. And in case, uh, if you want to see the whole videos of, the, uh, of this KTS strategy, then uh, you can come to the, um, the playlist uh, in my YouTube channel, or you can simply um, click on the... Um, you can come to go... You can actually go to... Um, KTS um, uh, web page where you can download the, the free PDF and uh, you can you can also review all the videos in that website. So either way, uh, please enjoy the archive and hopefully you keep enjoying the new topic in the month of September. <clears throat> okay, so uh, today I'm not going to do any analysis because I will be doing it tomorrow on the weekly forecast. But today's topic is mainly about some psychology. But uh, more precisely, that will be about the, um, the how to study Forex and how to study um, markets in trades. So let me um, open... Let me share what I... 
uh, did on my YouTube here. So this is my YouTube community and this is for public YouTube community. And um, I asked everyone about this question. How do you study trading? How do you study trading? And whether you're winning or losing or break-even trader, I think this topic is important because the way we trade in the, the also the way we study trading should be different. So if you haven't uh, took a vote yet, please uh, do right now, or you can actually um, put your comment on the chat in terms of how you study, how you have been studying, and how you will be studying trading in the future. And after I hear some of the comments, I will be also talking about how I studied trading on my own. So I think that will be interesting to see how different we are to study trades. So um, let me see. So here, um, I, I gave uh, three or four choices. And one is by reading books. I got uh, 430 votes and by reading books, I got 14%. Uh, and by watching videos, 61%. By backtesting, 21%. Other, 4%. So, um, are you also watching videos and learning trading? Or do you prefer to read books to learn trading? Or do you backtest mainly to trade, to, uh, to uh, practice and study trading? So which one is it? Uh, or if it's something else, please uh, make a comment on the chat on live. So um, and that also might be all these. You may be doing all these for sure also. If that's the case, please also mention that. Uh, and also, um, how do you study is a question. So if you can be precise on your answers, I think that will be great. That will be a great uh, discussion today. Okay, so I already started to see some comments now. So let me see. All right. Um, Fahin, Alfonso, and Josie, Dirk, thank you for joining also. Okay, um, let's see. Emily says, uh, Okay, what's the difference between a subscriber and the monthly member? A monthly member, um, which is my Ichimoku community, you will be getting uh, lots of perks in my community. You can actually find the website through the link on below the description and see everything that, that I offer on the monthly membership. Okay. Mifi says, I like to study, so that's good. All right. Thank you for joining, everyone. Good to see you. Um, Tushar, good to see you too. Antonio says, I attend courses and read the books. All right. Yeah, you can attend the courses. You can. There are lots of uh, free courses and paid courses. You can attend these, or you can ha actually attend these offline courses and uh, read books and study continuously. Yeah, definitely, that's one way to do. Okay, Mark P says, I like to analyze the situations where I actually get burned. Try to understand better why the market went against what works. Okay, that's important too. Yeah, uh, because um, the losses are the part of the process. So if you know how to um, deal with the losses and how to know um, why the market reversed with some reasons, for sure that will be helpful. Especially after you took the entry and the market reversed, you know exactly when to exit by doing that. So for sure that is important and that's exactly what i did also okay sorry says by video and youtube all right woman says by videos by back testing but mainly by real trades yeah live in real trades is also the best way actually that's a, that's the best way to uh to uh study yourself 
Yeah. So, but because we can't keep checking videos, we can't uh, keep reading the books without trading. We can't do that. We have to trade at some point when you become confident and when you have some basic idea, basic knowledges, then uh, the next step is to trade life and uh, experience, practice and experience. So definitely, that's also a key. Um, okay, so Vasile says, actually all three, I used to read a lot, lately see videos, but definitely backtesting is the most important and I am not doing this enough. Okay, yes, importance of backtesting is also the key to success. Yes, I used to not backtest before, I used to read books many, and I used to watch many videos and I attended seminars also when I was in Japan. There were so, so many seminars in trading Forex or uh, cryptos or some specific indicators, technical analysis. I used to attend these seminars, offline seminars, and um, learned how to trade. And, but, and then when I started to live trade, there was something missing for me. And what was missing was I wanted to experience more. I wanted to practice more and experience, experience more because um, the markets are moving 24 hours, but um, sometimes it's range. And um, based on the strategy that I built, I might have no chance to trade today. In that case, I'm feeling like I'm spending some time, wasting some time without, without taking trades live. And that's when I started to came up with the idea of backtesting. And for backtesting, I do use the Forex tester. You can also get the uh, tester discount with coupons from the below description. So uh, you can click on that link. But uh, I used to um, start to backtest and it made me much progress, much bigger progress. So yeah, definitely backtesting is important and you, you have to spend time in backtesting too yeah that is also true all right on my way says combination of all four but backtesting should be high component okay so you also agree the importance in backtesting yeah that's true oscar also says backtesting to solidify, solidify the strategy learning yeah that's true because when you backtest, by backtesting, um, you will get used to the patterns in the markets. Uh, and also, um, you will get used to the entries and exits and how the market will be moving along the way. You know, you may wonder uh, why people backtest. I, because I was the one too before. When I didn't backtest, I was wondering why people backtest. Why people backtest and practice, spend time. You know, I was thinking, we have to trade in life. So why do you spend time in backtesting? You may be thinking that like that, right? Because I was thinking like that too. And uh, the, the answer of the, the reason why people backtest is to get used to uh, and to, to get used to the price actions and how Ichimoku clients behave and also um, uh, to have simply more experience in trades. Uh, let's say, for example, when you run the tester, you can run the tester, let's say you, if you run it for all, for all day, you can take trades, maybe 30 trades or 20, 30 trades you can trade, but um, in the live market, you may have no chance. It may take uh, 20 days to take entries and exit 20 times in life. But in the tester, you can do this in one day. So it's time efficient, actually. So, yeah, uh, that's why I recommend everyone to the backtesting after you get some good ideas of the strategies. Okay, hello Daryl, thank you for joining. Good to see you. It's been a while. Thank you for joining as well. 
Okay, and the look says all three as well as live trading, as it gives you the exact feel of the currency pairs. Yes, that's true. All right, yeah. All right, John Hera, thank you for joining also. Okay, uh, let's see. What do you think about Tenkan Kijun Sen cross of the monthly or BLX? I'm not really sure about the BLX, but uh, for the analysis, I will be doing tomorrow. So uh, please come back tomorrow on the weekly forecast, and I am happy to check some charts. But today, let me focus on this topic. How do you study trading? Okay, Daryl says I do all. Mostly hours of backtesting and paper trading. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, because if you spend more time in backtesting, then you not only be confident on your strategy, but also when you take trades live, you kind of know um, how the market might, move, might be moving afterwards. And you know or what to do um, as as it goes on. So everything comes from comes from experience. Sometimes for me too. Uh, sometimes for myself, uh, it's kind of uh, I feel sometimes it's difficult to explain something. Like let's say one day, uh, you know, uh, my student asked me, uh, "Why did you take trade before the breakout of the daily resistance?" Let's say. And um, for me, based on the backtesting experience and based on also my live trade experience, I was confident that, not, that the market breaks the resistance and that's why I took the buy. But um, when you read the textbooks or in theory, you have to wait for the breakout. You have to wait for the breakout and wait for the pullback and pushback to buy at the previous resistance. Right? That's from the textbook but in life market it always does not happen you know sometimes after the market breaks it just goes up continuously without any retracement and you might be losing all these potential pips so um so yes um the chart i mean um the how to say like the things you read or um, learn from the textbook and the videos are uh, different in live market. That's for sure. Like for example, when you are at the driving school, when you learn how to drive a car, um, you sit down and read the textbook, but you won't be able to drive because you have no experience. And as you practice based on knowledge you learned from the book, then you can drive a car eventually. So same is true in trading. Yeah, Kevin says I watch most mostly videos, but I read books too. Yeah, you know, um, watching videos are effective because not only the words but also the the charts. And the voice, and um, the uh, yeah, the other uh, senses you can use than the books to get some ideas. But um, sometimes I prefer to read books, especially when it comes to like a psychology or mindset uh, topics. I prefer to read books than uh, watching videos. Well, I do. I do still watch videos, but uh, I, I'm also comfortable uh, reading books on these uh, psychology topics because um, I feel less noise in book. Noise means the voice, the tone of the voice, or um, the facial expressions. You can't see that on the book. You only see the words in the book. Sometimes when I really focus on uh, what I want to learn, I prefer a book than the videos. But I guess that depends on your preference. Like some people are audio person, so people, uh, some people uh, learn more from the audio, but some people learn from the visual. 
So we are all different. And we have, I think, our own preferences in terms of uh, what's comfortable to learn. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Annie says, how to avoid the false breakouts, support resistances. Yeah. So that also uh, is um, captured by backtesting. Yeah. But I will talk about that topic when the market's moving sometime uh, next week. Okay. I watch mostly videos by watching videos and reading books as well. All right. I watch videos mostly modify and combine systems. Okay. I also use Forex Tester for backtesting. All right. Paper trading is a good trading. Training. Okay. In August, most currencies uh, did not move in any directions. Yeah, that's right. It went back after the break of the daily support resistances. Yep. Point flip says screenshots of taking trades, writing on the pictures, and keep a trading journal. Fewer videos nowadays focus on psychology via books. Okay, that's really nice too. Yeah, journaling trades is also another thing you have to do. Um, I used to not to journal on my trades. Simply, I was referring to the spreadsheet or the performance uh, graph from the broker or from the platform. And I was only looking at that, uh, uh, that uh, trade history and uh, was trying to learn something. But um, now, as you know, I have my own spreadsheet and I track all my trades on that spreadsheet. Well, that spreadsheet is... Uh, to to uh to also capture how many break-even trades i have and get the ratio of win and loss and break-even but um yeah when i started to journal my own trades i also take screenshots and upload all my trades in in the group but um yeah when i do it um the best part is i can remember my own trades and uh, that's really important too. Like uh, you can keep trading on life, you can keep backtesting, but sometimes you have to look back your own trades. Um, looking back on trades uh, actually gives some wisdom in terms of how not to lose in the same pattern in the future. So um, journaling trades is important. Like um, let's say uh, one day I took the uh, entry by by taking the trend line bounce and band walking and uh, let's say scarcity gold cross and counter trend line breakout and uh token box breakout on one of the jpi pairs i took the buy and then the market reverse afterwards and uh, when i saw that simply i record i capture screenshot entry and exit and then I leave uh, because at that time, I would never know why the market reversed. And after a while, when I saw that a screenshot, there was something missing on my entry. For example, uh, I was not seeing the resistance level on the daily or the weekly or monthly was close. And that's why that may be the reason why the market went backwards afterwards. Um, or um, let's say that was one of the uh, Fibonacci extension levels and that's why the market reversed. When I took that trade at that time, I would never know. But now after a couple of years later and by looking back my own trades in the past, I know why I lost it. And that becomes wisdom on my own trades in the future. You can actually see my trades, see my entries and exits and screenshots, but these trades are not yours. These are these trades are mine. So um, uh, the best way to learn is to track your record, but also um, um, take screenshots and save them on the PC 
and look back at some point, maybe next year or half a year later, you look back and see how you took the trade. And if you haven't changed the way you took the trade, let's say half a year ago and today, then um, it's okay. But uh, if you still see the same pattern of losing, then that means there is no progress. Um, so also that should be refl refl reflected on your performance too. Like if, if your performance is not really good enough after half a year or one year, then there, might, there must be something wrong. Something wrong on, your, on the way you study, on the way you look back the charts. But at least you have some trades for the last one year. So there are something to look back. But if there is no journal by yourself, then there is no way to look back your own trades. And there is no way to improve your own trades to the future. So that's why journaling trades is very important. But you may wonder, you may think um, journaling trades might be too, it takes too much time. Every time, do I have to take screenshot every time? Entry, exit, then uh, takes time. And saving the PC, make comments, takes time, right? You may think like that. But uh, as you get used to it, and if it becomes habit, it doesn't take long. It becomes natural to you. So um, you have to have the right habit uh, to, to trade. You can't blindly keep studying without knowing how to implement it on your trades. So yeah, we have to be effective in uh, learning also in trades. Yeah, and also I used to say that the, um, you know, in terms of learning curve, I had the video about the learning curve, but um, let's say when you study or passing exam, um, the more you study, the more you have a chance to pass the exam, right? But in trading, it's not true. The more you study, um, I mean, uh, yeah, no matter how many times, how many hours you study, it may not be reflected in your performance. But um, this learning uh, memory, when it, what you learned, stays in your memory, in your brain, and suddenly it actually explodes and you have a good performance, suddenly. But we never know when the perf your performance becomes better. It may be half a year later, or three months later, or one year later, or two years later. We're not sure exactly when uh, you uh, break through these uh, losing streaks. But one thing for sure is it, it will. It will have a breakthrough. But uh, you can't see progress. Like um, You may think, I have been studying. I have been studying the trading for the last half a year. I spent so much time to in learning for the last half a year, but I'm still losing. And you may be thinking, uh, you know, I, I'm not really confident and maybe trading might be not for me. But actually, uh, that's not true because again, the learning curve is different. In, in, uh, in most of the learnings, the more you learn, the more you, you, have a pa you have a chance to pass the exam. So the learning curve goes like this. Straight. Uh, this is time. And uh, horizontal is time. And vertical is a chance to pass. Chance to be success. And the more you put uh, effort in learning, the more you have chance to pass to success. But in trading, it's not like that. In trading, um, no matter how much time and effort you take, the 
you, it may not be ref reflected on your performance. So it goes like this sideways, but suddenly it breaks through like this. Learning curve, I think in my experience, goes flat and flat, flat, and spikes up like this way. But most of the traders, most of the people quit learning, quit trading when they get tired of this flat with, uh, without no success. And then they quit. And that's why they never see successful result uh, in the future. Because it doesn't go like this, like in other uh, exams. But uh, if you don't know about the fact that the learning curve goes like this, um, yeah, it may be, uh, yeah, of course, it, you will be feeling a diff difficult to keep studying. Especially if you, wanna, if you want to um, um, have a better performance sooner, then it also becomes more difficult. So, and I tell this because I had the same experience before. I, I have read so many books, I've studied so many indicators, and I thought I had some good experience in trading. And that's why I quit my full-time job and became a full-time trader. But after I became a full-time trader, I lost for two years. And that was a pain, simply. Sometimes I was really sad myself that um you know um maybe the time i spent to study forex was worthless so i was thinking to uh come back to the full-time job or maybe doing something else maybe i thought trading is not for me but i kept studying because i liked it i liked to, to see charts because it's all interesting. All these candlesticks are the reflections of the human psychology. So I liked to see charts. So, and I did it anyways. And, uh, and then eventually after two years of, uh, of my experience, suddenly there was a breakthrough. And my biggest breakthrough was to focus on the non-losing mindset. So because before I was only focusing on how to make profits and what strategy can give you some profits for me and how to get the right entry chance and how to get the right exit timings. That was my mindset, that was my focus that I was losing. But after looking back, uh, one of my biggest breakthroughs was to focus how not to lose. So that means how to have a proper risk management. And then uh, my performance became much better. And that's why in this uh, YouTube channel's uh, theme is to help you become a non-losing trader. I don't say if you follow me, you can be profitable. I don't say that because it's not guaranteed. But uh, I help you become a non-losing trader. So that make sure you don't lose big along the way. But this is also important in terms of studying trades. So yeah, it's so coming back to this theme. Um, you know, studying trades involves uh, lots of things besides what you learn technically. And most of the time it comes from experience, I think. Yeah, so uh, now let me check some comments on the YouTube here on this comment box. I see uh, Hussein says also by looking at the chart and recognizing how price moves. I mostly learned from you, as I once said, I pronounce you my idol, K. Thank you so much. Uh, the greatest teacher, full of experience, knowledge, kindness, and caring. Oh, thank you so much for a comment. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How 
I mean, uh, recognizing how price moves. Yeah, it's very really important. Price action. Yeah, let's see. I used stochastic. Uh, sorry, I used statis statistical holding to assess market conditions, situations to um, devise custom indicators to trade in them, then backtest to optimize. Oh, that's good. That's a step by step creation of um, the custom indicators and perhaps EA also in robots. First, reading, second, watching videos, then backtesting. Okay, that's nice. And then afterwards will be live market trace. Yeah, because backtesting, you can do it and it's effective, but um, you know, the, the live markets do not really move that quick. Live market actually goes really slow, very slow. So you may have to wait for a couple of minutes, a couple of hours until you get the right entry chance. So the question is whether you can wait for the chance or not. If you jump into the markets emotionally, then um, you may fail in the long run. You may win, but the, um, but the problem of emotional trace is when you lose. When you lose emotionally, you might be stressed and you might be doing some revenge trace and when you lose again you be more stressful so never trade never enter exit by emotions you have to have always reasons of every actions you take in trace why did you buy here not here but why did you buy here right and also why did you put the stop loss here why did you put, take this lot size? And first of all, why did you choose this market to trade today? And why did you use this time frame to trade? And when you move the stop loss to break even, why did you move the stop loss to break, break even at this timing? And why did, did you take profit here? You have to be able to answer all these why questions on every action you take. Um, then you should be fine. If you can still come up with the reasons, then you have to uh, you have to look for it and find it. Okay, John Harris says I also practice with a PayPal trading account with KTS. Okay, yep. Noel says with forward testing and reading books again and again. Yeah, that's also good. I have to vote all three. Yes, you can. Yeah, Henry says, my trading with a small account, only way to really learn trading is to trade with the real money. Just use a little in the beginning. Okay. I combine reading and watching videos. Forward testing. By demo trading, all of the above. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, looks all nice. Okay, let me check. Okay, Mark says... On this chat, don't forget that the back test is closed candles. So many traders do not embrace this simple concept. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So the best way to learn in back testing, well, back testing is efficient in time, but uh, you can't see every tick moves. As Mark says, all these candles are closed. Also, let's say when you look at the chart like this and when you look at the past chart like this, sometimes, you know, people talk about these past frozen charts. Let's say if I introduce you stochastic cross trade, trading strategy, and I can say, okay, when you take sell here at the dead cross, you can win. When you take dead cross here, you can win trade. And also here, you take a dead cross, and then you maybe also win. And when you buy here at the gold cross, you can make profit along the way too. Like um, in a past frozen chart, it's so easy to say. Very easy to say because they are all frozen. Also time cycles too. Like um, 
you know, you may have some time cycles in Ichimoku in the past frozen chart. It's so easy. But the question is whether you can trade on the future markets with this concept. And that's also totally different. Um, so I'm not really saying that using the past chart is not effective. Of course, it's effective to learn, but uh, you better not to see future markets to, uh, to study. And that's why I recommend backtesting. And also, you have to see every tick move. Um, and in backtesting by tester, you can't. And in this uh, trading view, you can't either because let's say when you do a bar replay, like this. And if I move the candles one by one, like this way, you only see these candle open and close. Open and close. Like this on in trading view. But uh, you don't see how the tick moves are happening in one single candlestick. So in this in this part, you have to experience and practice on live market. So yeah, I think what Mark brought up is really important. Yeah, and this is the reason why people usually get caught by these fake outs. Let's say um, when you are here, and when I see this like this, and when I just move to the next candle, then you know that this was a fake out. There was a resistance, there was a fake out, and then the market reverse. It's so easy to see it in the past frozen chart. But uh, when it's live, when it's live and when you monitor this bullish candlestick, you see the open price was here, the market started open here, and it went down maybe first, and then up all the way like this way and up and up up and before before confirming the close you see the market all the way up here and you confirm the market closed above the resistance so this is actually the breakout of resistance and afterwards the market goes up you may think but then the market goes backwards this way so, but uh, if you see the frozen chart in the past, it's so easy to identify. But on the live market, it will be difficult to see if this will be a fake or not. Especially if it becomes weak, it's even more worse. Like uh, maybe this will be a good example. Um, let's see, like this here. So, when you're at the live market, the market goes up, and did you see it was about to close above the resistance? So, you may have thought that it was a breakout, and before confirming the close, people tend to jump in, take a buy here, and close below, or way below the resistance, and when this pin bar is visible, for the traders in the future, and sellers come in, and the market goes down this way. So, this is also an example of what you cannot see in backtesting. So, you have to imagine if this is a live market, then how can I avoid this fake out? You have to imagine yourself and Keep back testing in this manner. So I used to, I used to um, study by the previous charts. In on the books also, uh, the books you always talk about the past charts when the strategy was working. But uh, at some point. I stopped following on these teachings because um, yes, it was working in the past, 
but uh, it may not work in the future. And if it doesn't work, if you don't see that in the future, then what would you do? And usually, these books and um, the lessons based on past frozen chart won't really elaborate this topic. And that's why I stopped following these uh, past frozen chart lessons. Don't let me uh, turn off the lights. Okay. Yeah, so that was also uh, the reason uh, why you have to be careful in the backtesting too. Okay, let's see. Real trade. If I keep going, keep reading, watching videos and backtesting and never give up. Yeah, that is important. Never give up is the key. So again, remember the learning curve in trace. The learning curve never goes straight up like this way in, in, in trading. It goes sideways. It keeps going in the sideways first. And then suddenly there's a breakthrough. Okay, so let me see. Yes, I backtest manually. Yeah. I do backtesting manually. Backtesting means practice. Practice on backtesting tool like Forex Tester is what I mean by backtesting. If it breaks the next support resistance level up, it will keep going. Generally, a retracement to retest the broken level bounces off of a lower time frame structure level. Yeah, that's typically the case. Okay, let's see. Books written by or about top traders are helpful. It shows their thought process and trading method. Yeah. Yes, um, I like to read books of these thought process and mindset of the traders than technical explanations. Okay, Vasily says, what is your opinion about MT4, MT5 strategy tester having very exact rules that can be programmed in an expert advisor and use this for backtesting? Yeah, you can do it. You can backtest with that uh, using by using EA in uh, or tester, the strategy tester in MT. But uh, yeah, sorry, what I mean by backtest is backtesting manually, not by running the robot, but uh, backtesting manually in practice trace in the previous chart without looking at the future candles. Okay, Holman, um, if you want to take trades in the five minute, then I recommend you to go for a super subscription. But if you trade only higher time frames, basic would be the best. Okay, data mind says it really depends on what your talents are. Use what you are confident at first and take the good bad from the teacher, it's like trying to resolve a problem. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, we are all different. So we are our learning process and preferences are also different. Yeah, but um, there are some uh, certain uh, things for sure that is necessary to be a good trader, profitable trader. Or non-losing trader so again we have to um, take journal that's first you have to take journal and track your records in the spreadsheet or in a memo uh, however you do you I recommend you to take screenshot at least on the entries and exits and then you look back every month and or every three months you look back on charts or your own trace especially the ones you lost you, lo you lost you, you're losing trace you look back and try to find a losing patterns in the past 
because um, and never do the same mistake in the future markets, future trades um, is one of the ways to improve your trades and how you can learn trading. Of course, you can backtest. You can also read books and videos. That's important. But also, when it comes to uh, learning the backtesting or on the live markets, um, you better take journal. Okay, let me see. Let me check some other ones. Okay, and the look says, uh, Kaysan, thank you very much for your guidance. It's also because of your teaching that I had improved in my trading. So having a good teacher is also important. Oh, thank you for your comment. Thanks so much. Yeah, let me check some other comments now. Okay, why five lines can act as resistance? What is the logic behind? You mean five lines means uh, in Ichimoku? Well, uh, Chiko span is not really acting as a resistance or support. But the other fours are because they are all what we call Hane line. You can actually... Uh, Search uh, YouTube with uh, my name ForexK and uh, type Hanne line, and you can get the concept about it. Okay, Crypto Trader says uh, hello. Please share the Ichimoku trading system so that I, I and everyone else will not lose more. Yes, I am actually sharing Ichimoku trading system in my YouTube. So please keep following and also you can check some other previous videos. Okay, where are you now? Oh, I'm in Dubai now. This is in Dubai, not Japan. I came to Dubai last July. Okay, Lady Crypto says the mental game of trading, a very good trading psychology book. Yeah, I think I read that before, but long ago, I think I, I will read that book again. But uh, yeah, when it comes to book, I like to read books, something related to trading, but also I, I like to read some something uh, not dr directly uh, about the trades, but uh, about psychology or mindset from athletes. Or some uh, gamblers also was very important, very uh, interesting. Uh, because after all, these mindset rules will be the same, basically. Okay, so I guess uh, it's about a time to end the live stream for today. So again, thank you so much, everyone, as always, today. The markets were not moving, so it was like about more, more, more like a free talk style about learning for X-rays. But um, yeah, I hope uh, you had a, uh, a you you noticed something new today, and uh, you learned something new today. That would be great. And uh, yeah, I will see you on the next one. So. Yeah, since it's weekend, uh, please have a great weekend. And tomorrow, I will be doing the weekly forecast, weekly uh, market forecast. So I will be covering not only the Forex pairs, but also gold, WTI, and indices, and Bitcoin. Also, news for next week, I will be covering all these topics tomorrow, exactly at the same time. So if you can join, please do. I will see you tomorrow. Or uh, for those who are Ichimoku community members, I will see you soon at the membership live stream. But either way, have a great weekend and see you soon again. Until we see you next time, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold.
Alright, bye for now, everyone. Matane. Thanks so much.